Have you ever passed somebody when trail riding and they went like this, or like this, or like this? Today we're gonna to be talking about trail riding etiquette. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Ride with the Knights YouTube channel. I'm Josh Knight and I race dirt bikes as well as trail ride. I love trail riding. I spend a lot of my time riding out in the mountains, out in the desert, trail riding with my friends and family. And trail riding etiquette is something that's really important to me and something that I've tried to implement into my riding for a lot of years. Trail riding etiquette simply refers to the practices and habits that you have and that you do when out trail riding to respect the trail and respect other trail riders. So today we're gonna to be sharing a bunch of our tips on how to improve your trail riding etiquette and a couple different ideas. Now these tips have been gathered from my own experience as well as a bunch of other uh, off-road riders, my friends and my family that are experienced off-road riders. So it's not just my knowledge. We're gonna divide this video into two sections to help us kind of digest these tips a little bit easier. The first section we're gonna talk all about tips that are regarding trail preservation. So how we can respect the trail more. And the second section we're gonna be talking about tips on how to respect other trail users. These may be other people using the trail or other trail riders that we pass on the trail or inside our own group. Section one, trail preservation. All of these tips are regarding how to respect the trail and maintain the trail in better shape. So one of the biggest ones is to just practice staying on the trail. Depending on what area you're riding in, the rules may vary. For example, if you're riding in Forest Service land or BLM land, a lot of these different areas have designated motorized trail, meaning you are allowed to go ride, but you're you need to ride on the designated path, which is the trail. You can't exactly just go wherever you want. However, there are some areas, typically maybe in BLM land, for example, maybe the sand dunes that are open motorized use. These areas allow you to ride and roam free. So at the sand dunes, you can ride wherever you want. You're not actually limited to just the trail. So be aware of where you're riding and the rules and laws regarding that type of area. Educate yourself on whether you're riding on public land or private land and the rules on that area. Another important thing to remember is when you're riding in the mountains, you're often encountering different obstacles such as switchbacks, logs, rocks, roots, or a whole bunch of different obstacles. Be sure to practice navigating these specific obstacles and not creating reroutes or skipping them. Oftentimes in the mountains, you'll find sections of switchbacks where riders have cut going down or up the switchbacks, or you'll encounter a very difficult obstacle that's got a complete reroute or it's all dug out around the obstacle because riders don't have the skills necessary to navigate that particular obstacle. Be sure to practice developing the correct off-road riding skills to navigate the obstacles and not just simply go around them. Anybody can learn these skills and practice the correct techniques of clutch control, throttle control, and developing the right skills to maintain traction to ride all of these different things. We actually at Ride With The Nights offer a free one hour training. You can head over to ridewiththenights.com and check that out. Just enter your email. We'll teach you all the different tips that we've learned in our experience to help you navigate things like that. The main principle is to just simply be aware of the tracks that you're leaving when you're out trail riding. Now we do ride dirt bikes, they're aggressive, they have knobbies on the tires, and we all like to go fast. However, with your own discretion, be sure to keep that in mind when you're out riding off-road trails. If the trails are excessively wet, if it's early spring, muddy, there's snow melting, then be careful with the amount of erosion that you're causing. Also, when you encounter different obstacles, again, um, using all of the throttle and spinning is never the correct solution to get unstuck. Focus on clutch control, um, torque, and developing good skills that revolve around traction. If you have traction, then you'll be able to navigate all obstacles. If you're just spinning, then you have zero traction. So just be aware of the footprint that you're leaving and be conscious of what your tires are doing to the trail. As you continue in your riding experience, you will develop an increased awareness and discretion 
as to what areas you can free ride in and play ride and hill climb and other areas where you can't. I see a lot of beginner riders that go out to public riding areas and just start hill climbing anywhere they can find, when in fact these areas are actually designated to the motorized routes. Be sure to educate yourself as to where you're riding and do your best to stay on the trail. It's also a good idea as you gain riding experience to become more involved in the trail systems and the off-road community in your area. A lot of the things that you can do are pretty simple. Each time you go out riding, you can do your best to maintain the trails and respect the trails. You can volunteer at different riding clubs. You can clear logs, you can move rocks, you can repair switchbacks. There's a whole list of different things. As off-road riders, it's our responsibility to keep these trails going and to respect them when we ride. Section two, respecting other trail users. Now, depending on the area that you're riding in, you may be riding on a trail that's actually multi-use. Now, what this means is it's not strictly designated to motorcycles. It's also open to maybe horseback riders, hikers, and mountain bikers. When riding on these multi-use trails, it's always good to make sure you have an understanding of who yields to who. So when you encounter or pass somebody on the trail, uh, you respect the yield and move over for them. And motorcycles, unfortunately, are actually at the bottom of the totem pole. So motorcycles yield to mountain bikers, mountain bikers yield to hikers, and hikers yield to horseback riders. Now, this isn't the same for every trail. However, that's pretty general and typical. Uh, when you start riding a trail, there'll typically be a marker or a sign at the beginning that will show you the correct yielding process. So be aware of that. And uh, it's also important to be aware of seasonal closures. This kind of goes back to trail preservation. But on those same markers, you'll also be able to see um, if the trail's open to the specific type of motor use, whether it's motorcycles, four-wheelers, or UTVs as well as when the trail is open. This is something that I've become a little bit more aware of the last couple years. I just always thought that dirt bike trails were always open, but to respect the seasons and the amount of moisture that can be in the soil, some trails will close for a couple months out of the year and then reopen during the summer season. So be aware of seasonal closures as well. Another component to good trail riding etiquette is an understanding of the hand signals. By using the hand signals, you can indicate how many remaining riders are in your group behind you. So when you're passing another group of riders on the trail, you can use a hand signal to indicate how many riders remain. Now, it's all happened to all of us at some point when we're riding, somebody has given us the five or maybe the fist and we thought they were waving or giving us a fist bump or something. But be aware next time you're riding because they may actually be using the correct designated hand signals. Five being that there are five remaining riders behind me. Um, four, three, two, one, all the way down to a closed fist. And a closed fist indicates that you, yourself, are the last rider in the group, and the other group can now proceed down the trail without worry on the blind corners. So be aware and start practicing using the hand signals when you're out riding. The final component of our trail riding etiquette is to be prepared and self-sufficient. So when you show up to a ride, make sure that you have all the things that you need to take care of yourself. This is including all of your correct riding gear. It's going to include all of the correct tools to repair your bike. It's gonna require fuel for your bike and your body. So you're gonna to need to pack food and hydration liquids to make sure that you're staying up on your energy levels as well as, well as fuel for your dirt bike. We've all been in that position when we're out trail riding and there's somebody in the group that just forgot all their stuff, didn't have a riding pack and their bike broke down and now you are responsible for taking care of them because you were the one that brought your tool pack. Hey, I can see a FedEx truck, man, we can ship it home. A good practice to have for trail riding etiquette is to go through all your list, make sure that you're prepared for your trail riding, that you're not gonna drag your buddies down, but that you're gonna be helpful. So go through your list, pack your tool bag, take enough food, and always take water when you're riding, and those are gonna help you Respect your friends and enjoy a better trail ride. That's it for trail riding etiquette. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you wanna see more content just like this, check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. Or if you're interested in learning some off-road riding skills and improving your riding technique, head over to ridewiththenights.com. There we have a free one hour training. It's jam packed full of all sorts of different tips and techniques to help you improve your off-road riding skills. It's completely free. All you gotta do is head over to ridewiththenights.com, enter your email, and you can start watching today. Be sure to subscribe to the Ride With The Nights YouTube channel so you don't miss any more videos just like this one, and we will see you guys in the next video. Remember to keep on ripping.